So this is the Luna Smart Robot, a pet bot from the company Kiai Tech, who was kind enough to send Luna out and partner on this video. The Luna robot was first demoed at CES 2023. And out of all the robots that I've had here at the studio, this one is hands down the most adorable. I mean, come on, look at this guy, right? It's definitely meant for a younger audience, so I gave it to my kids to play with, and they both seem to have a great time learning its features. Now, Luna is a four-wheeled imaging recognition robot that has quite a bit of tech packed inside of it. In the box, you get Luna, a USB Type-C charging cable, and a game prop kit, which includes a ball you put together for its fetching game, and a red cape for bullfighting, which we'll get to later. The one thing that surprised me was how well Luna is built. It not only looks like a cool robot, but it has a cute animated look that reminds me of a character from a Pixar movie. Now the majority of the body is made of plastic, but the wheels are wrapped in a thick rubber. This is important since Luna is going to be moving around a lot, harassed by your kids, hitting objects, and possibly getting attacked by your pets. Now I have two cats. One of them is afraid of Luna, but then again, he's afraid of everything in life. And the other cat watches Luna curiously. I've seen Luna hit objects, couches, and get manhandled by my son, and it's still in fantastic condition. So there's a lot of moving parts inside of Luna. It can lift its paws up and down and turn instantly in any direction. The head can also move up and down while the ears can move back and forth. It allows Luna to feel very animated that I think other robots currently struggle with. The tech inside of Luna is actually quite extensive. You have an onboard four array microphone so that I can pick up your voice from any direction and speakers so that I can communicate with you. There's a HD RGB camera beneath the face so it can see its surroundings, a 3D TOF LiDAR sensor to measure distance and a quad core CPU. The setup process is pretty straightforward. First, you charge Luna, which can take up to 2.5 hours, but once you're done, you can power Luna on and connect it to your smartphone using the Luna app. There's an app for both iOS and Android, so it'll work with your phone, your iPad, or Android tablet. It stays connected to your Wi-Fi network, so once you set it up, on the phone, you can easily connect Luna using another phone or tablet without having to go through the entire setup process again. Now, when I first set Luna up, it automatically downloaded an update and the company plans to continue updating Luna with over the air updates as time goes on. There's a small tutorial you go through the first time you powered on. It involves a story on how Luna comes to life. And look, I think a lot of kids will enjoy this story because it's very cute. It's basically a seed spirit that was created by this big rock dude who sends you through a portal to get inside Luna. Very simple, very basic, but it, you know, it gets the creative juices flowing. Let's just say you get to see some really cute animated cartoon butt cheeks. Now, Luna does have object recognition and edge detection, so it's not gonna beeline straight for the stairs, but it's recommended to keep Luna on the floor at all times and never use it on the table. Like I have it on the table right now for this video, but it's not on. The object recognition is cool because you'll see Luna move around objects, but also interact with them, which can sometimes be quite funny. You can access and interact with Luna using the app, but most of the time you're gonna be using your voice. Voice recognition is being powered by Amazon's AW US Lex service, and you can wake up Luna by saying Hello Luna. Make sure you say Hello Luna, not Hi Luna, not Yo Luna. It has to be Hello Luna or it will not recognize you. When Luna hears your voice, it will automatically detect your position and turn towards you and lift its head. It will play a visual on the screen that looks like a ripple to let you know that it's waiting for a command. So the best way to show you what Luna can do is to load up the application and kind of go through all of its features. Right now I have Luna on the floor. I turned down the volume on it so you don't hear it while I'm talking, but you can use a tablet, you can use a phone. I'm using a tablet so that you have a better visual experience while I explain things. This is what the app looks like after you set up Luna. You basically have a bunch of options to choose from. This kind of here is just the big stuff. Like for example, if you go to the trick box, this will allow you to use some of the items that came with Luna, specifically the ball and the cape for bullfighting. The ball's a lot of fun. You know, you can play fetch with Luna. It will pick up the ball. It will bring it back to you. It will throw the ball if it can. It will seek the ball. It's just a little good way to interact with Luna. If you don't want to play fetch, there's also the ability to set up obstacles. So if you leave small toys and slippers all over the floor, Luna will explore and start playing with them. It's actually kind of funny. There's also the bullfighting one, which I mentioned earlier. So you get this little red cape with a image on it, an image of uh, Luna. And what happens is you say, hello, Luna, she'll respond and then you'll say bullfighting and then she'll look for the cape and then she'll automatically charge once she sees it. It's a lot of fun to play. 
And there's just so many little things that you can do. Like even if you don't want to use voice commands, you can go in there and start using gestures. Like there's the bump command. You can, you know, you can give a certain gesture that will make Luna give you a kiss. There's about nine different gestures to choose from. And the finest one is having her follow you around just like a normal dog would, you know? Like you can set her on follow mode and she'll use her cameras and her LiDAR to detect you and then she'll follow you around the house. The second option is voice commands and there are a ton of voice commands and I don't expect you to remember all of them, but this is a good way to have a glimpse of some of them so that you can interact with her. For fun, you can do a lot of animal sounds. So if you say hello Luna and then you say cat sound or dog sound or eat some bamboo, it's gonna display a little graphic on her face and then it's going to mimic one of these sounds, it's kind of funny. There's even interaction, so you can get Luna to follow you, like I said before. You can tell Luna that you're back home, she'll give you some sort of animation. You can let Luna fist bump you, you can have the face recognition or look at me so that you could give it a command, or you can even have it play dead if you really want to. Even Luna farts, like she's a robot, but there's gas in there, so you can actually make her fart if you really want to. She does have some talents, like she can beatbox, she can drop a beat, she has the talent show if you want, something a little bit more entertaining. Basically the point of these voice commands is it keeps your kids entertained. Like there are so many different things that they can do with Luna that will keep them going for hours. But there's so much more, you know, like you have the inner world, which gives you some lore about Luna and what she's thinking, you know, if you wanna go more in depth with her. But the coolest thing I think is GPT Wonderland. This is actually being powered by ChatGPT, which I think is absolutely crazy. And this is where I think Luna becomes really important because not only are there fun puzzles and RPG games, but there's an encyclopedia and Q&A. So like your kids could literally sit down with Luna and do some of this trivia. Like I had the trivial, trivia animal open with Luna and then all you have to do is start play. And then uh, basically, you know, you, you ask Luna about animals and it will let you know if you got the right answer or not. You are correct. Dolphins have the largest brain relative to their body size among all mammals. And it's using the power of AI or ChatGPT rather to get these an answers or pull them from, from the internet. So I thought that was kind of cool. There's trivia about dinosaurs, you have about uh, pop music, you have about Star Trek, the list goes on. Like this is a pretty extensive list and they're obviously adding more with time. You can even do hand slaps. So basically you'll put your hand near her and she'll try to slap it and you have to move it away as fast as possible. And then if you want, you can play the shell game where she'll pop up two cups on her face and you have to guess which cup the ball is in. Now I don't have a laser pointer here, but if you have a laser pointer, you can do the laser chase game and basically her camera will look for the laser and start chasing it around the room. So you can buy that separately. Laser pointers are very cheap. You can pick them up at the dollar store. I should say though that the chat GPT feature is free right now, but eventually if you want to use that feature, you are going to have to pay for it separately. So just keep that in mind if you really enjoy that aspect of the application. But there's also an assistant if you want to just basically take over Luna. So for example, you can control her and have a race with her. Like you can physically control her with your phone or your iPad and move Luna and have her race back and forth. There's also the ability to remote control her. So let's say you're out of the house and you don't know where your cats are or you wanna look for something in the house, you can use the camera on Luna, control Luna, and then move Luna around the house, look for your pets. Maybe you wanna see if someone broke into your house and you wanna inspect the area. So it does provide an indoor camera for those situations. But I think the coolest thing about Luna is the fact that you can actually program with her. And I think for any child who's growing up to be able to teach them how to code, even if it's not like the most popular programming language, it will teach them logical steps on how to solve problems. So there's a bunch of different operations and logic that they can use in order to control Luna. There's also a community aspect to this. So you can go into uh, other people's uh, experiences and kind of learn from what they did. And then of course you can kind of copy them, mimic them your own and respond to them. So like you can click on this guy and you know, he obviously did a video on Luna showing off a feature. You can go there, leave a comment if you really want to, like the video, 
And of course you can record your own videos and upload it to the community as well. Now, how long does the battery last? Well, that depends how much you do with Luna in a day. If you're just doing very basic stuff, you can probably push Luna in about three hours of use before needing to charge. Right now I charged the battery yesterday. We used it for about an hour and a half and then we used it for another 30 minutes today, but we were filming. So we got about two hours of battery life. It just really depends on what you're doing with Luna. You can control the screen brightness from the app right over here. And of course you can control the volume. So right now Luna's going around the office. You can probably hear her now, the volume's at max, but I'm gonna lower it so you can listen to the video. Now, as I mentioned earlier, you have to be very specific with the voice commands. Even if it's a little bit off, it's not gonna understand you. But once you get used to all the voice commands, then it becomes a lot more natural. It's not going to respond to you instantly. Like there still is a process. Like you'll say something, Luna will turn and face you. Then you'll see the little ripple on the face and then you'll say the voice command and then Luna will process it and then give you the response. So there is a little bit of a delay, which is obviously normal for a device like this. But look, if you want some more quality of life improvements, they do sell a charging dock so that you don't have to physically plug in a USB type C cable every time you want to charge it. When Luna gets a little bit low, it will go to the charging dock and charge by itself instead of having to physically be plugged in all the time. So here's the thing about Luna. I think it's fantastic for someone who's like 13 and younger. There's a lot of little experiences that they can enjoy. And of course, there's also the ability to program with it that can keep you busy playing with Luna for years to come. It's also great for someone who has allergies. Like if you are someone who's always wanted a dog or a cat and can have one, obviously this is not gonna replace a real life animal, but it's not gonna give you allergies. It still provides a fun experience and you don't have to walk them outside and pick up their poop. That's probably the most important thing. If you're interested in checking this out, I'll place links in the description down below. If you have any questions, let me know as well. Like the video if you liked it, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in the next one.